Hello, my name is Elias Jabour, a professor of medicine, leukemia department at MD Anderson Cancer Center, Houston, Texas. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to discuss with you when the hypercephalic regimen should be considered and when not. I must say the hypercephalic regimen is a pediatric inspired regimen. It was inspired based on a, a Burkitt regimen uh, for pediatric uh, uh, back in the uh, end of 1980s. Uh, this regimen has been adopted our center of care at, at MD Anderson. But since its adoption, the hyper-CVAD has uh, gone through many innovation uh, to make it more adjustable uh, to our treat to our treatment of ALL, make it more make it safer, and optimize its outcome. Uh, so when we use the hyper-CVAD, well, what's hyper-CVAD? Hyper-CVAD is consistent to induction consolidation. Uh, unlike the typical pediatric regimen, it relies less on aspirationase, but it's given mainly later during intensification, not early on. So induction consolidation, and then uh, a maintenance of two years and a half with POMP, including latensification with pegasparaginase and hyper -CVAT, in addition to intratecal chemotherapy. Um, uh, the most recent uh, uh, adjustment of the hyper -CVAT were, uh, uh, were the following. Reduction of the acetylabine dose from three gram to two gram meter square. The matrix eight uh, has decreased from one gram per meter square to 750 milligram per meter square. Uh, with which the intrathecal essentially we give two per cycle, but during the even course of the metric RSC, we start with the RSC and then we do the metric state later on to avoid a coin, uh, the systemic and the intrathecal peak of metric state and therefore deliver a safer regimen. We watch carefully for clearance of the creatinine after cytarabine administration to avoid uh, CNS toxicities at 1.4 creatinine. Uh, we avoid uh, azoles to be given around the uh, the vincristin to avoid excessive neuropathy. And of course, we omit uh, the vincristin or we decrease the dose in case of neuropathy or, for example, severe constipation to avoid the uh, occlusions and finally measure supportive care. With this regimen at the Anderson, our early mortality is less than 1%, unlike uh, what's done in, in centers where they don't have experience of the hyper -CVAT. No, when do you use the hyper -CVAT? Uh, number one, uh, in uh, AYA population, we've shown that the pediatric regimen uh, aspirationase based are as good as hyper CVAD. We did two prospective studies, and therefore uh, both were equivalent. And in our hands, you can use either one uh, the hyper CVAD, rituximab, when CD20 is positive, or ofatimumab, or a pediatric regimen. Uh, in an older population, we use those adjust hyper CVAD, but that can cause high mortality rate. I know that. Uh, 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 the asparaginase as well is toxic for this population. We moved from the hyper CVAD to mini hyper CVD, where we omitted intracyclines and we reduced the dose of the rest of the chemotherapy, but we added inotizumab followed by bolinotizumab for this regimen. And with that, we have a four year survival of 50% in older population. And in 70 years and older, we removed fully the chemotherapy and we rely essentially on inotizumab and bolinotizumab. In pH positive ALL, we use the hyper CVAD in combination with DKI. And the most recent regimen uh, was the hyper CVAD and ponatinib. With that, we have a five year survival of 76%. And in patients who did not have a transplant, 86%. Wherefore, it's a practice changing where we walk away from, uh, from intensive chemotherapy, uh, uh, from transplant essentially. And finally, in the T cell population, hyper CVAD alone is not enough. Uh, pediatric regimen is good, but we modified the hyper CVAD to include nerabine and peg asparaginase early on after 4N and 5N. Uh, and uh, we added recently venetoclax. With that, we have a survival, uh, the median survival of 11 years, but with the addition of asparaginase to the early induction, we further improved the outcome. The follow-up is still short. Now, where are we going? Uh, well, I think the intensive chemotherapy is having less room moving forward. Uh, for example, in BCILL, we, 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 we're not using hyper -CVAD anymore. We use four cores of hyper -CVAD, but we add four blenatumumab, and we shorten the maintenance from three years to so almost 16 months. And with this regimen, we have a survival at three years today of 83%, which we leave better than hyper -CVAD. In a ph was ALL, we're relying more on immune therapy and TKI, so we're not using hyper -CVAD anymore. And with the blender point today, we have a survival at two or three years of 93%, the best we ever had. So in conclusion, I think the hyper CVAD is a major regimen. Uh, it can serve as a backbone to improve and to add immune therapy, unlike other regimens where you limit all the toxicities. And therefore, we're, uh, we 
moving forward, the regimen are relying on less of intensive chemotherapy and more integration of immunotherapy approach, uh, safer and a better outcome. Thank you very much.